The Jacobean Age, named for King James I of England, saw a brilliant flowering of British fashion, art, music, poetry, and theatre, much of it under the patronage of James Queen Consort Anne of Denmark. Jacobean fashion was highly decorated with lace and polychrome embroidery. Women wore very low necklines and standing ruffs that framed the face. Buffant hairstyles were popular among elite women throughout Europe during this time. Each woman adapted the style to their own unique hair. Many women simply teased or pushed their hair into soft fullness, but others needed hidden structural support, especially when large jewels were hung on them, as Queen Anne often did. In such cases, the hair was arranged over a firm pad. These needed to be comfortable, stable, and strong. They could be tube-shaped, they could be arched, or in pairs, one set at each corner of the forehead to create a heart effect. A lady of the court attending upon the queen must dress with period-appropriate magnificence. I shall be using the following tools. I shall need my wooden comb, a small dish of water to make my stiff, froward hair obey my will, small hair bodkins, a length of ribbon, and my tall, arch-shaped, felted wool pad with ribbon ties. Grosgrain ribbon stitched inside the arch prevents the pad from stretching. I also require ribbon flowers impaled on U-shaped upholstery pins. These are sharpened pins capable of penetrating the felt pad. These will both decorate and hold my hair in place. To further decorate my coiffure, I have a number of large pearl and crystal spikes strung on long corsage pins that will decorate the arch in a crown-like effect. I will also wear a pair of glittering brooches on the front of my coiffure. They are threaded with double-pointed pins. And before we start, a gentle disclaimer. After much research, I have been unable to ascertain precisely when in the 17th century that double-pointed pins came into use. However, if I am to arrange my hair by myself, sharp, short-legged, double-pointed wire pins are necessary for controlling my stiff, naturally short hair. More adventurous types may always use the historically guaranteed straight pins. Let us begin. I start by combing out my hair. I make a radial parting from ear to ear and secure my front hair out of the way with short bodkins. Sectioning the hair first makes the rest of the style easier to do. I then comb out my back hair to make a low ponytail. I center my felt pad over the radial parting. I then tie the ribbons underneath my back hair using a double-wrapped single knot. Double wrapping increases the tension so that the ribbon doesn't loosen. It is also relatively easy to undo when you need to take the style down.
Now I bring the ribbon ends over my back hair and tie it again using the same double wrapped single knot. Now I take a second length of ribbon and tie it over the first ribbon at the base of my ponytail, again using a double wrapped single knot. This guarantees that my felt pad will not come undone from the back. I now make a three strand braid from my ponytail. I divide the ribbons among the strands of hair and braid all the way down. The ribbons make my very skinny, shortish hair look thicker. Next, I wind my braid into a bun and secure it with short hair bodkins. Now I take down my front hair and comb it forward in preparation of arranging it over the pad. Starting from the center, I comb up small strands of front hair and wind the ends around the tip of my finger, forming circles. I dampen the ends of these strands with water to make them more pliable. I pin the circle of hair to the rear base of my felt form using the ribbon flowers impaled on double pointed upholstery pins. I am careful not to drive the sharp pin toward my scalp. I work out from the center in alternation. To prevent sections of hair from sliding off the pad, I pin ribbon flowers along the top of the form as I go. Jacobean women grew their hair to its full natural length as I have, However, my full length is relatively short. This is because I have a hair loss disorder causing the hair on top of my head to grow shorter than my back hair. This is not an impediment to Jacobean styling, however, provided I use a suitably sized pad. Once all my front strands are pinned, I gently comb to spread out the hair and conceal the pad, which was felted from wool colors that blend with my natural hair color.
To create a pleasing effect, I balance the ribbon flowers across the arch, adding more as necessary. Once I am satisfied with the placement of the ribbon flowers, I add the pearl spikes. I aim the points downward so they won't easily fall off, although they are unlikely to do so because movement in my heavy, constrictive Jacobean gown will, perforce, be smooth and stately. I now attach my glittering brooches as the final touch. Once I am dressed, I shall be ready to attend upon Her Majesty the Queen.